Welcome back everyone, Mean Pooh here, and today I'm going to install two drives in the MSI GE75 Raider 9SE. One of the drives will be a Firecuda 2TB SSHD. This will interface with the SATA connector and will be installed in the extra drive bay. The other is a 970 EVO NVMe drive and will install in the extra M.2 slot. If you are here, you're either doing one or the other, or maybe you're upgrading to run in a RAID configuration. Either way, I have to say that you must take all precautions while upgrading your machine. I can't stress enough for you to wear some kind of ESD strap or work on a mat. This will help ensure that no static will mess with your components and cause damage. Even when prepared with all the proper tire and tools, you still can destroy your machine by being careless. Only touch what you need to and get out. Another thing that I have to mention is there is a person I have been talking to that has had his warranty voided by opening the laptop. This is coming straight from MSI and I find it very shady if they have practices such as this. Anyway, the story is that he came home one day and Windows did not recognize his video adapter. He sent it in and they said it would cost 2,500 euros to get it fixed. The machine is a little over two months old and he paid something like 3,000 euros. It was an RTX 2080 and it was, you know, it was an MSI machine. But what's really messed up is that MSI includes a drive caddy in the box so you can add storage. Basically what I'm trying to say is that this is at your own risk, so be careful. So with that said, let's move on. This is the 2.5 Firecuda SSHD, and this is the NVMe drive. If you are installing a 2.5 inch drive, you are going to need the Caddy. It should be located in a plastic bag such as this if you have an MSI Raider. Set the items to the side and let's open the machine. The following insert is from my MSI Raider review. On the back, there are 13 screws we need to remove. There is also a tamper sticker that you can punch through or you can remove it completely. Just a note, I have the protective film on the underside to protect the panel. These two screws are different sizes. Make sure you put them back in their corresponding location. When attempting to open the case, you are going to need something strong and thin and not metal if you can help it. I struggled with this for over 45 minutes before coming back to the camera. I also had a few black pieces of plastic that were left over when I was done. The best place to get into the case is on the front corners. You may need two prying tools to help open. When you finally get your foot in the door, go ahead and slide left or right very slowly. Continue the technique all the way around. I could not get in here because the two jacks are protruding through the case. 
So I gave up and started on the other side, hoping to have some luck. I went as far as I could go and flipped it back over to the other side. And still no dice. Finally, I was able to get the ports pushed back and continued to pry all the way around to the back. There is a tab that is in each corner of the panel that is hard to get to. When these are disengaged, it will be a little easier to gain access. You want to keep moving around the laptop with your pry tool. I had to remove this panel to be able to access the remaining tabs. Finally, I was able to get in. The bottom is plastic with some metal plating. Now we have an overhead shot of the laptop. Next, we will remove the battery. It's just one screw. When the screw is out, just lift up on the battery. Now get the plastic bag with the drive caddy. The contents contain two black mounting screws. Also, you will have two silver bracket screws, which will attach the caddy to your drive. And lastly, you will have the caddy with a tab. Take your drive and carefully turn it on its back and place the caddy on top. Grab the bag with two silver screws and attach it to the drive. This is what it looks like attached. There should be no play and the fitting should be quite snug. This is the location the install will take place. Take your drive and fit it directly into the slot. It will be a bit stiff. You can take your finger and help it along by pushing the back of the drive. It will not take a lot of force, so if you are pushing and your laptop is moving, then something is wrong. When it is installed correctly, the holes will line up here and here. Grab the two black screws and begin screwing. <sighs> okay, I know, bad choice of words. How about grab the two black screws and start mounting the drive caddy to the case? Don't screw too tightly, but just enough. It felt like the screws were going to strip the plastic mounts, so I just crisscrossed until just right, meaning no play or movement. This is the next section we are going to be working in. Remove the screw completely that will be holding the NVMe drive. When finished, remove the drive from its packaging. The drive will go in at an angle, and please note that there is a notch on the left side if pointing at your person. If you try to insert the drive into the M.2 slot and it will not go, you could possibly have it upside down. Just take a few seconds to familiarize yourself with your hardware and try again. As I insert the drive, I will be coming in at an angle. The drive should fit easily into the slot without hardly any force at all. Once in, I will hold the drive down until the mounting screw is all the way in. Make sure the screw has a snug fit. When you are finished, reinstall the battery and don't forget the screw.
Here is an overview of the two drives installed. You can now reassemble on your own or continue watching the video. Before I start, I would like to mention that upon opening the laptop again, it took me just over 10 minutes, including removing and replacing the screws. The small plastic piece that I removed in the upcoming video didn't have to be removed at all. And lastly, the bottom panel is in fact plastic and is sprayed to look like metal or it could be some type of coating to stop interference. I'm just guessing because I have no idea whatsoever. Anyway, here is the reassembly video. Also, if this video helped you out, please feel free to like and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Mean Poo, out. Put the bottom panel back on and press. You should start hearing the tabs engage. Make sure to check that the microphone and headphone jacks are properly seated. I'm now going to replace the one small panel that I removed. It's easier to open the lid, seat it in, and then close it. Continue pressing Till you don't hear any more clicks. Now I'm going to put the screws back in to hold the case tightly together. Remember that the smaller screws go in back and there are only two of them. 